Right guys, another channel update today, a uh, massive channel update because I've just sort of done something I never thought I'd do. Now, obviously this is, you know, very early in my YouTube career, so this is just one of many milestones that you guys have been wishing on me, you know, over the past few weeks. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for for giving me so much praise on the channel over live streams or anything like that. Just you guys have always given me praise. But in terms of getting interviewed and getting recognised back, that's come very rare at the minute, but we did it. We did it today. Now, you probably see the title of this video. You're probably thinking, what have you done? Well, if you've seen my community page and my whole Facebook, Twitter Instagram, you'll know what's going on. Basically, I was interviewed this morning at, B well, not at, but for BBC Radio Sheffield. So, I want to tell you guys the whole story, the entire story, and nothing but the story. So, before we get started, please like, comment, subscribe, click the notification bell for more videos. I've got a brand new Close But Not Forgotten video coming today that I pre-recorded from yesterday about Ranger County at Thorpe Park. That is coming today. Uh, big shout out to Attraction Swirl for that video, and I gave you a shout out in that video as well. Uh, but for now guys, let me take you through exactly what went on today. So, let me take you from the beginning. I woke up today around about 6 6am, 5.30, 6am, around about that time. So, I knew my interview was 7.50am. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, it's by the end of today, and... <laughs> You can probably tell it, I am shattered. I'm trying to give as much energy as I can, but I am absolutely shattered today. Because I've just been busy, 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 busy. Editing the other video today, doing the interview, uploading all my social medias, getting everything sorted. It's just been a frantic, frantic day. So, I say I'll go from the beginning, and I say I wake up around 5.36am. But I think this story goes way beyond that. So, I want to take you back to a couple of weeks ago, and I get a call, and it's from the producer of BBC Radio Sheffield. It's a guy called Sean, who is an absolutely wonderful guy. Massive shout out to Sean. Really nice guy. Really nice chatting to him. And, you know, it was, it was just a really good guy to talk to and to, you know, open up about the story of the channel and things like that. Uh, so, he was the first person I spoke to. And we spoke for around about a good half an hour, uh, chatting about the channel, chatting about any few bits and bobs they wanted to know beforehand. And, you know, it was a really good experience because I never expected to be approached to do this. I never, I, I was never approached to do anything, hardly. So, you know, to get them coming back to me and saying, oh, you know, do you fancy chatting about theme parts on the morning? And I was like, yeah, that's absolutely fine. So we chat for about a good, nearly half an hour about, so around a good 15, 20 minutes exactly. Chatting about the channel, chatting about little bits and bobs, we had a good laugh. And yeah, Sean is just one of those down-to-earth producers, a really, really great guy. So, fast forward from that and I wake up between 5.30 and 6am today. And I'm absolutely shattered, I've got no bones left in my body it feels like, I feel absolutely dead. And I'm really waking myself up here, really trying to get the energy. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, when I got told that I was going to do this interview this morning, I was very, very nervous. Now, if I do manage to get an audio clip over from the interview, I will, um, hopefully with their permission, release it on the channel. Uh, but for now, I'm just going to have to tell you guys exactly what happened in the interview. Uh, not everything, because just in case I do get the audio clip, I want to share it with you guys. I don't want to give away all the details about it, but... What I can tell you is the guy who was interviewing me. Now, this guy is the presenter of The Breakfast Show on BBC Radio Sheffield. He's a brilliant guy, absolutely wonderful guy. He retweeted my tweet about the interview this morning. He said, top stuff, Aaron. So I was really chuffed with that. It's a guy called Toby Foster. And those of you who are fans of the comedy Phoenix Knights will remember him. Uh, he's done a lot of different things. He's done... Um, he was one half of the double act in Phoenix Nights. He played uh, Len uh, from the double acts of uh, Les Alanos with Alan. Uh, of course, Alan played by Steve Edge. He was also uh, making appearances in That Peter K Thing uh, and Max and Paddy's Road to Nowhere. And he's also done um, 
a mock celebrity big brother, which I think is genius. And he also worked on a British comedy film called Snappers, which featured the likes of Tim Healy and Saran Jones. So, you know, this guy doesn't pull any punches. This guy is a massive talent in the industry. He's a legendary comedian. And, you know, he presents The Breakfast Show on BBC Radio Sheffield now as well. So... Meeting him on the phone was great. Obviously, I couldn't go in person because of the whole social distancing, the coronavirus. So I couldn't physically come into the studio to record the interview. Um, now, I thought it was going to be like a pre-record thing before I found out from the producer when they told me, do you fancy coming to talk about it tomorrow live on air? That's when I knew it was live on air. And immediately, I was worried. Now, I want to give a shout out to every single person that's on my uni course and any other of my friends from college or school because... The people I spoke to gave me so much support, so much love and support. You know, they were always, you know, they were reassuring me, everything's going to be fine. Because, you know, what if I get the audio clip over here, you know, people say it doesn't sound nervous, but I'll tell you guys, it may not sound like I was nervous, but I was bricking it all the way through. All the way through I was bricking it. Because I knew, once I looked at Radio Sheffield and the following, and, you know, they have 104,000 Twitter followers. They've got around 40,000 Instagram followers. Like, I mean, I believe they've got the verified tick on both of them as well. So, you know, this is a massive deal to me, you know. It's, it's just, it's brilliant. It's a massive deal for me personally because this was like the first sort of contact to do with the channel on the mainstream media. This is the first time uh, someone like a mainstream source of uh, media like the BBC or ITV or Channel 4 or Sky or anyone like that, mainstream media, they all count. So it's the first time one of those type of medias in the mainstream have actually talked to me about my channel. And, you know... With the amount of following that Radio Sheffield's got, I, I'm really excited for the future. I was more excited now than I was before. I was really excited, obviously, anyway. But I'm twice as excited about the future now. I, I spoke about the future in many different videos on the channel before. I spoke about future projects, VidCon 2021. I spoke about, you know, reality shows that I'd want to do if I ever got approached. You know, Strictly, I'm a celeb, Dancing on Ice. I would do any of that. But if I got approached, it's like the 1% chance I get approached because it's very rare to get approached when you're... A, yeah. Let's be honest, it's very rare to be approached when you're a YouTuber. It's not completely out of the question, but it's very, very rare. Especially when you're you know this small at the minute compared to the multi-million you know, YouTubers nowadays. But that's the kind of stuff I want to emulate and reach. And... You know, this is a small, not a small, this isn't, this isn't even a small step. This is a massive step in the right direction. And I've got to give a shout out to Toby Foster, to Sean the producer, to every single person at BBC Radio Sheffield and every person at the BBC Radio in general. You know, BBC Radio 1, everyone at radio, everyone at the BBC, all of them. I want to give a shout out to all of them because every single one of them at Radio Sheffield and all across the BBC are so supportive. And they're really kind. They're all really kind people, I'm sure. And especially the people at Radio Sheffield, they're really kind. They welcomed me into this interview with open arms. And it was just great to to be a part of, really. So I can only thank them from the bottom of my heart as well. A massive thank you to Toby Foster for the interview. You're a great guy. Uh, I'd love to meet you in person one day and to see you in real life because you sound like a, a great guy. Um, Sean, the producer, again, massive shout out to you because you're an incredible human being. Um, you know, you, you, I was so nervous about this interview, but you know, beforehand, a couple of days beforehand, you got me settled. You were, you know, helping me talk through the channel and, you know, trying to get a few bits and bobs. And, you know, they did a nice intro before I got to talk. So, um, you know, they played one of my clips, like a section of my Wallaby Belgium construction update clip they uploaded a few days ago. So they played like a section, like a little section of that to intro me in. So. You know, even that, even to do that, they could they could have easily not done that. They could have just said, right, here's Coach Chow, how are you? They actually, you know, spent the time to take a section of one of my videos and play it beforehand to give people a flavour of what we're about. So for them to do that was very, very kind. And, you know, it's just been an incredible experience to be a part of. I'm not going to lie to you guys, I'm absolutely knackered from it now. Um, because I woke up around half five, six o'clock, so I hardly got, I've hardly got any sleep whatsoever, because I went to sleep around half past eleven, so, um, I've hardly had any sleep, to be honest, but, you know, I'm, I'm full of, I'm, I'm trying to get full of energy throughout the rest of the afternoon, 
get an early night, um, you know, tonight, and then uh, refresh again for tomorrow because uh, tomorrow's a big day. We've got some good videos coming tomorrow, but also, you know, I'm going to be out in the night hopefully. So uh, if you see me in Donnytown Centre tomorrow night, you know, just um, if you want a photo, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, but, <laughs> but. What I will say, uh, to summarise this little channel, well not little, I keep saying little, it's not little, it's a massive thing to me. Massive channel update. To summarise this channel update, this massive channel update, again, just a massive thank you to everyone at the BBC. Just brilliant, brilliant people. And, like I said, this is a small step, why do I keep saying small? It's not a small step, it's a massive step in the right direction. So, um, I hope you love me doing these channel updates because it gives me a chance to talk to you guys without any characters, any news to talk about, any facts to deliver, unscripted, updates, my thoughts, here they are. Uh, and we're going to have more of these channel updates to come, I'm definitely sure of that because, you know, there's a lot of exciting stuff that I want to start getting into. Um, and one... One massive event that's going down next year once dates are confirmed is, of course, the big YouTube event, VidCon. Now, I'm not going to speak too much about it in this video. However, once I've tried sorting everything out and got everything sorted, I will hopefully, hopefully, if all goes to plan, I want to be on here in around eight months' time doing another channel update officially announcing to you guys that I will be one of the creators you can meet and greet at VidCon 2021. That's my hope for next year, to be one of the creators, to meet and greet you lot in London over a weekend at VidCon. That would be the ultimate dream next year. So, um, in terms of future projects, VidCon is the one I'm working towards next year. Uh, the interview has just topped off this year completely. This year has been a difficult year, obviously, with the pandemic. But the weird, and I really don't want to say it, and I don't want it to be taken out of context, but weirdly, this has been the best year of my life because I've done so many, you know, massive things on this channel. I've done massive things personally. I've met some incredible people over this last 12 months, and it's been an incredible process, but at the same time, this world has gone to absolute ruin because of this pandemic. So at the same time, it's a bit of a mixed year, but hopefully... We will all recover from this in 2021 and on top of it being a better year than this year for the channel and for me personally I hope it's going to be an even bigger year than this year but this interview with Radio Sheffield has just it's just topped off this year completely so um, yeah this has been obviously these channel updates are very unedited so uh, it's just going to be me talking for a long period of time so you know, it's I love doing these channel updates because it keeps me updated. And then, like in a few years' time, I can look back and it's like, that's when I did that interview five years ago. That's when I did this three years ago. That's when I did this, this, and this. And that's why I say in previous videos, I've got long-term aims for, you know, these massive things like books, tours, Dance on Ice, Strictly. All these things that I want to do in my life, that's why I have these ambitions because I want to... Um, be ambitious with my ambitions um, and I can look back on them and say right well I did this and this so you know this is one of those ambitions you know I've always wanted to be interviewed but I I, I ne you know even if it was just you know people say oh Radio Sheffield's just a section of BBC Radio it's still just as important as any other station in radio for the BBC Radio Sheffield's incredible part. They, you know, they're one of the best coverages of news for the South Yorkshire and the North Derbyshire area. So, you know, they're a massive, massive deal. And to get the opportunity to do this interview was massive, absolutely massive. So, again, to summarise, thank you very, very much to the people at BBC, BBC Radio, BBC Radio Sheffield specifically as well. Uh, Toby Foster, you're an incredible guy. Sean, the producer, you're an incredible guy. Uh, there's a woman that phoned me up and sort of helped switch me onto the line, you know, during the, uh, this interview this morning to get me onto the line with Toby. So I can't remember your name, but you're an awesome woman as well. Thank you very much uh, for your kind uh, words. Um, and yeah, just to be fair, it, it's you guys. It's you guys, the fans, the, the Channel Nation. That's what I'm calling you. And that's what I'll probably call you at VidCon next year in, uh, in London. You're my Channel Nation. Um, and the Chal Nation got me to this stage in my career and my life. So from the bottom of my heart, 
thank you guys. Um, but that is it, my fine fellows of the Channel Nation. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe for more channel updates like this one. Hopefully, the next channel update will be something before the VidCon announcement, if I do do a VidCon announcement. But for now, guys, thank you very, very much. My name is Coach Chow, Kit on the Coach Life, and I'll see you guys in the next video very, very soon. Take care, guys. Have an awesome day.